Summary of Funny Boy by Shom Selvadurai Funny Boy by Shom Selvadurai tells the story of R.G., a Sri Lankan Tamil boy who grows up in Colombo in the 1970s and 1980s, through six stories that are only slightly linked to each other. R.G. finds out that he is different from other boys and finally figures out that he is gay. He also has to deal with the growing tension and violence between Sri Lanka's two largest ethnic groups, the Tamils and the Sinhalese, which leads to a civil war at the end of the book in 1983. In the first story, Pigs Can't Fly, R.G. is a young boy who loves going to his grandparents' house once a month to play with all of his cousins. When the kids are away from their parents and Amachi, they split up into two groups. The boys play cricket in the front yard, while the girls and R.G. play Bride Bride, a game where they act out a fake wedding. R.G. always gets the most important part in this game, which is being the bride, until a new cousin, who everyone calls her fatness, shows up and tries to take R.G.'s part. Her fatness makes her mother, Kanthi Auntie, march R.G. around in front of all the uncles and aunties, who are terrified. One uncle laughs out loud and calls R.G. a funny one. R.G.'s parents, Amma and Appa, tell him he has to play cricket with the boys, but he has other plans. The next month, R.G. starts a fight between the cricket teams of the boys and, in order to get back to being the bride, tells her fatness to give him the groom part in Bride Bride to start with. But after they fight, her fatness makes fun of R.G. again in public. Amachi thinks he caused the fight, so he gets angry and then runs to the beach to cry. Ritha Auntie, the main character of the second story, returns to Sri Lanka after four years in the United States. She wants to marry Rajan, a family friend she met while living abroad. Arji, who is seven years old, is excited that his bride-bride dreams might come true. Even though Ritha doesn't look like what Arji was hoping for, the two become friends. Ritha lets R.G. try on her makeup and invites him to join her in a school production of The King and I. During practice, a Sinhalese boy called Anil starts flirting with Ritha and then offers to drive her home. But when Amachi hears this, she gets very angry. In the 1950s, her father was killed by a Sinhalese mob during race riots, which made Amachi hate Sinhalese people and start backing the Tamil Tigers, a separatist guerrilla group. Arji follows his interest and starts to learn about the different ethnic groups in Sri Lanka. Amachi threatens Anil's family, and when Ratha and Arji go to apologize, Anil's father curses them out and says that he would never let his son marry some non-Sinhalese. Amachi plans to send Ratha to Jaffna in the north for a couple of months after two aunts see Ratha and Anil eating lunch together. Ratha and Anil are sure they love each other, so they make plans to get married when she comes back. But on the day she comes home, the family hears about riots in other parts of Sri Lanka, and Arji's brother Diggy says that a Sinhalese mob attacked the train she was on. Ratha auntie comes back with a cut on her face. She soon gets better, but she can't bring herself to keep seeing Anil or taking part in the king and I. Ratha and Rajan, who was her first love, get engaged, but R.G. stops believing that if two people loved each other, everything was possible. In the beginning of the third story, see no evil, hear no evil, Appa buys a hotel and goes to Europe for business. Daryl Uncle, a white burger man who was born in Sri Lanka but has lived in Australia for the past 15 years, comes to see the rest of the family. Daryl, a writer, has gone back to Sri Lanka's north to report on the growing violence there. He also makes the family more tense, and after R.G. gets better from a short bout of hepatitis, he and Amma take him to a house in the hills. During this trip, it becomes clear that Daryl and Amma used to date, but because they were from different cultures, they could never get married. To Amma's horror, Daryl insists on going north to Jaffna to cover the government's misuse of power during the war. While he is gone, the family hears worse and worse stories about violence in the north. When Daryl doesn't come back, Alma calls the police. They don't believe her fears and tell her that he washed ashore, died, on a fishing village's beach. They say it was an accident, but Alma slowly comes to understand that Daryl's death was probably caused by the Sinhalese-run government. She goes to see QC Uncle, a civil rights lawyer, who tells her to forget and move on. She also goes to the village of Daryl's servant boy Samarat 
where the careful and patient locals chase her and Argy back to their car. Even when Appa comes back, Alma doesn't get over how sad she is. In the fourth story, Small Choices, a young man named Jagun comes to live with Argy's family and work at Appa's hotel business. He is the son of an old school friend of Appa's who just died. Jagun worked with the Gandhiyam movement in Jaffna before he moved to Colombo. He also briefly joined the Tamil Tigers, which he admits now. Argy, who is now a teenager, is quickly interested in Jagun, both because he finds him beautiful and because he likes how determined he is. But Jagun starts having trouble at work, where the mostly Sinhalese hotel staff think he is getting promoted because he is Tamil, and in Colombo, where the police start following him and finally arrest him on suspicion of helping plan a murder attempt. Even though Jagun is released without being charged, word quickly gets around. Appa starts getting threatening phone calls, Appa's Sinhalese workers start to avoid him, and locals almost attack Jagun and write death to all Tamil pariahs on his door at the hotel. Appa feels bad about firing Jagun, but he has to choose between his loyalty to Jagun and his business. Jagun goes without even saying goodbye. Argy knows Appa's situation, but he also thinks it's wrong that Appa has given up on Jagun and used his friend's son as a scapegoat to save his own family. In The Best School of All, the second to last and longest chapter of Funny Boy, Appa sends Argy to his brother Diggy's strict, traditional, colonial era school, the Queen Victoria Academy. Appa believes that this will force Argy to become a man. The schoolboys are strong, very manly, and very different from each other in terms of race. But Argy, who takes Sinhala medium classes, has to watch Sinhalese thugs like Salgado beat up Tamil kids. Salgado is allowed to do this by the vice director of the school, Loku Bandara. Argy also makes friends with and likes the happy, carefree Shihin Soiza, who shows him around and protects him from Salgado. One day, the cruel director of Shihin's school, Black Tai, tells him off for having long hair. He then starts taking Shihin to his office every day to punish him and a group of students he calls the future ills and burdens of Sri Lanka. The next day, R.G. reads a poem that makes Mr. Sunderlingam, his English and drama teacher, very happy. Black Tai asks R.G. to recite two poems for an upcoming ceremony. R.G. soon finds out that the ceremony is meant to keep Black Tai in charge of the school. Even though Black Tai is mean, he wants to accept students from all backgrounds, while Lokobandra wants the school to be officially Sinhalese and Buddhist. At the event, Black Tai will honor an important politician who can make sure he stays in office. Over the next few days, Argy recites the lines for Black Tai, who strikes both him and Sheehan whenever he makes a mistake. Sheehan and Argy also start spending time together outside of school, but Diggy tells Argy that Sheehan is known for having sex with other guys. Sheehan and Argy suddenly kiss when they get Mr. Sunderlingam to talk Black Tai into letting them go. Sheehan asks Argy to his house, where he thinks something will happen between them. However, Argy feels uncomfortable there and goes home instead. Instead, Argy asks Sheehan to his house, where they play hide and seek and have sex in the garage. At lunch, Appa makes it clear that he doesn't like Sheehan. After lunch, Argy starts to feel very guilty and blames Sheehan for turning him bad, but that night he thinks about Sheehan and fears as Black Tide keeps punishing Sheehan. Argy comes up with a plan to save Sheehan, instead of reading his poems correctly at Black Tie's event, he will mess them up on purpose so that Black Tie's speech, which is based on the poems, looks funny instead of inspiring. He does this plan bravely, and after the service, he tells Sheehan, I did it for you. Riot Journal, the last part of Funny Boy, is made up of Argy's journals from the 1983 Tamil Sinhala riots, which turned into the Sri Lankan Civil War. Argy finds out that Sinhalese mobs are burning down the homes and businesses of Tamils in Colombo, and that the government is helping these mobs by giving them names of Tamil families from voting rolls and not telling the public what is going on. Argy's family plans to stay with Chitra auntie and Sena uncle, who are friends of Amma and Appa. However, they soon find out that someone stole the gas from Sena uncle's van and used it to burn a Tamil family to death in their car while the police watched. 
Argy's family comes up with a new plan, if someone comes to get them, they will hide with their neighbors, the Pereiras. They have to put this plan into action that same night, when a mob comes and burns down their house. Argy is shocked and frightened, and he can't understand how bad it is to lose his home. Argy's family does come to Senna and Chitra's house, but Senna starts getting frightening phone calls from people who accuse him of hiding Tamils. During a short break in the ban, Sheehan goes to see Argy. He seems very normal and suggests they go to the movies, which makes Argy understand that Sheehan was Sinhalese and I was not. Lakshman, the uncle who lives in Canada, calls and suggests that the family try to get refugee status. Amma and Appa say they don't plan to get passports for their kids in public, but in private, they agree to do so. Soon, the family finds out that Amachi and Apache have also been killed. They were burned alive in their car. Radha goes to their funeral as well. Just before the family moves to Canada, RG sees Sheehan for the last time, but they have already stopped feeling anything for each other. In his last note to his diary, RG goes back to his burned-out house and cries. About the author. Sham Salvadurai grew up gay in Sri Lanka in the 1970s. When the civil war broke out in 1983, he had to leave the country. But RG is not based on Salvadurai's family or life in any other way. In fact, RG is Tamil, while Salvadurai's mother was Sinhalese and his father was Tamil. After coming to Canada, Salvadurai went to York University to study drama and wrote a few TV plays before he hit it big with Funny Boy in 1994, which is still his best known work. Funny Boy got the Lambda Literary Award for Gay Fiction and the Books in Canada First Novel Award. The well known Indian Canadian director Deepa Mehta plans to make a movie out of it. In Cinnamon Garden, 1999, which is set in the 1920s, a young feminist woman's family puts pressure on her to get married. In Swimming in the Monsoon Sea, 2005, a boy falls in love with his cousin from Canada, and The Hungry Ghosts, 2013, shows the emotional struggles of a gay Sri Lankan Canadian man who goes back to Sri Lanka to take care of his elderly mother. Salva Durai has said that one of the main reasons he writes is to help gay and lesbian teens accept who they are. Salva Durai has also put together two collections of short stories. Storywala, 2004, is a collection of short stories from the South Asian diaspora, and Many Roads Through Paradise, 2014, is a collection of short stories from Sri Lanka. His books have been translated into many languages, and he has also written short stories and non-fiction for outlets like The New York Times and Toronto Life magazine. Selva Durai has also taught writing on occasion, and he is best known for starting a project called Write to Reconcile, which helped develop Sri Lankan writers who wanted to write about the civil war. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.